Hello and welcome again. In this video we will create Add to Cart functionality. The video is divided into three sections, namely Create the local storage and arrays Create hidden text inputs to populate the arrays Populate the local storage when a product has been selected. So let's get started. With the index page open in Rappler, select App and add Browser Component. We will be using this to redirect to the shopping cart when a product has been selected. Select App again and add the Local Storage Manager. In the int introduction I did say that we would be using Session Storage. I changed my mind. There is no difference between the two except that session storage ends its life when the browser is closed and local storage does not expire at all. Give the storage an ID and define the storage items. Here we will create three objects cart, subtotal and product ID. These objects will be populated by corresponding arrays. For the cart object, we need to create a keyed array that will hold the various components of the cart items. These are product, price and quantity. Don't forget to change the type of the latter two to number. Add our first array after the local storage. Give it an ID of array cart and select cart items keyed array under the local storage. Click dynamic events to expose the value updated action. We need this action to update the local storage. Select local storage set and choose the cart object as the name. This will need to be entered twice. Bug for the cart items, choose the cart array items. Unfortunately, this also needs to be done twice to register properly in Wapler. Add another array after the first array. Give it an ID of array subtotal and select the subtotal object under local storage. Click dynamic events to expose the value updated action. Select local storage set and choose the subtotal object. Remember to do this twice and for the value choose subtotal array items and also remember to do this twice. Add our last array after the subtotal array. Give it an ID of array PID and select the PID object under local storage. Click dynamic events to expose the value updated action. Select local storage set 
and choose the PID object. Remember to do this twice, and for the value choose PID array items, remember to do this twice as well. This takes care of the storage and arrays. Now for the second part, create the hidden text inputs. These will be placed in the card footer. Right click the card footer and under forms insert a text input. The input will be hidden so remove the class and choose type hidden. Duplicate the text input four times, giving us five inputs all up. Select each input, giving it an ID and name. The inputs will be used for product ID, product, price, quantity and subtotal. Go back to the first text input and under dynamic attributes choose value. The value for the text input is found under the repeat area. Repeat the process for each of the following two text inputs, namely product and price. For the quantity, assign a static value of 1. For the subtotal, we will multiply the price by the value of the, quant the quantity text input. For the last part, we'll create the actions for when the item has been added to the cart. Select the Add to Cart button and under Dynamic Events, choose the Mouse Click event. Here we will populate our three arrays using the values of the chosen product. Select the Add item of the PID array and give it a value of the PID text input. Do the same for the array subtotal using the value of the subtotal text input. Lastly, select Add Item for the Cart Array. Because the value is an array, not yet supported by Wappler, 
we will enter the value manually. You can copy the code from the description section of this video. If you are like me, you will want to know if what we have created actually works. Click the Open in the Browser button to open the site in Chrome. Right-click the page and choose Inspect. Go to the Application tab and see that Local Storage is empty. Now click the Add to Cart button and witness the local storage being populated. So that the Add to Cart button can only be used once, we will hide the button and show a disabled button with a modified text. Add a new button after the Add to Cart button. Style the button, make it block level and disabled. Double click the button and change the text. Under Dynamic Attributes, choose to show the button when the local storage PID contains the value of the current PID. Unfortunately, this option is not available so that we will change it manually by replacing has value with contains. We will also remove the top margin for the button. Select the Add to Cart button and hide it when the Disabled button is shown. We will now add an extra action for the on-click event so that the user is taken to the shopping cart page. Notice the quotes surrounding the address. OK, I did say three sections which makes the following an optional exercise. We will add a Go to Cart button when there are items in the cart. Add a column after the title column.
inside the column add a button. Double click the button, replace the text with two spaces and an opening bracket. Click the Thunderbolt and choose items under the subtotal array. Choose Array and Sum. Next, choose Numeric and Format Currency. Back in the button, add a closing tag after the code. Go to the start of the button text and click the Font Awesome flag. Choose the cat icon. Reload the page and change the icon size to large. Change to mobile view, mobile first. Change the title column to seven, goals wide, and the button column to five calls wide. Change back to general view. With the button column still selected, right align the text. Select the button and give it a style. Under Dynamic Attributes, choose Display Show. For the win, we will choose the sum of the su subtotal items being greater than zero. Last of all, I promise, we'll add the go to cart action when the button is clicked. In the next video, we will create the shopping cart. Thank you for watching.